Are you waiting for me to do the intro? <laughs> oh, well, I mean, it is your video, so. Yeah, I know. But um, <laughs> I know last week, like, you guys were suggesting a lot of things when we were talking about this, how I should be doing Twitch streams and fancy AV tests that are sophisticated, that can compare, like, AVs in real time. But look at these analytics. People don't want to see that. What people want to see is troll ransomware videos. So we have to give them that, right? Of course. Look at this. Isn't this wonderful? I get a message from a random person on the internet that says enjoy. Always the best when the uh, person just sends you a link to their malware. It's so descriptive, right? Enjoy. And, enjoy. and we certainly will. But to be honest, Leaping Computer have already talked about it. And when I first got the message, I was assuming that this is going to be some kind of ransomware where it's just made for demo purposes, just for YouTube. It's the celebrity ransomware that just exists for attention, but apparently not. What you'll see in a moment is that when you actually run the ransomware, instead of asking for payments in you know, money, it actually asks for Amazon gift cards because... Yeah, your kids want gift cards. The older ransomware used to ask for payment in um, gift cards because that was before cryptocurrency was big. And how do they manage to swap out that money, do you think? Um, the kind of people who develop ransomware aren't so nice that they're just going to send gifts yeah, to their friends. I, I think a lot of it turned out that they would either try and sell the gift cards or that they would basically kind of buy something that they had created. So Ooh. like a, a song or a book and buy that and uh, basically launder the money that way. I know that there are a lot of third-party sites, like especially in the gaming community, where people just buy and resell games, and that's how they kind of... Yeah, I think it's the same for uh, gift cards. There's a lot yeah. of um, they just buy people willing of, to buy gift yeah. cards. For, and then like, they just resell the them on price. eBay or something like that. A bunch of uh, websites that will also buy your gift cards off you. Especially um, like a lot of countries like where they don't have, where credit card payments aren't that common and people want to buy gift cards. I know that happens. And mm -hmm. even if we just go and search on eBay, I'm sure there'll be like ton of Amazon gift cards. They're slightly less expensive than what they would cost on Amazon. So when you see things like that on the internet, the reason for that is usually they bought it with stolen credit cards or with ransom money and now they just want to convert it. People will buy it because it's cheap. Yep, that's definitely true. So yeah, now, without further ado, I'm just going to run the file to see ransomware in action. That's what people want to see, apparently. Yeah, people and, have quite fascination uh, with just seeing ransomware in action. <laughs> it's almost like art at this point. Look at this desktop background. The author definitely gets mm -hmm. points for that. I would the use this as nice. my desktop the background. Nice. The actual ransomware screen is uh, not exactly the most artful, I, I would say. I mean, it, it looks clean enough. Like, it's not that bad. And I can still, I mean, like, the best part is it still lets me use my computer. Yeah, doesn't, that's, that's it's useful. not broken, glitchy, like a lot of the other ones. And what are yeah. your thoughts on this? Yeah, I'm trying to figure out if this is smart or if this is lazy. Um, <laughs> Combining it's, all it's the files smart. into one and then encrypting it. it. Because I believe it uses WinRAR to encrypt. They basically don't have to like make their own ransomware or such. Yeah, so. they don't use their own encryption algorithm. They just use WinRARs. And yeah. I'm guessing they just use the command line version and just run it in the background yes. really quickly. Yeah. Yeah, basically they just, they will just extract the WinRAR file and then run that. It's pretty simplistic, but it's also quite effective because without knowing the password and assuming it's longer than I think I mean, like how secure characters. do you think that is? I know people no. can crack WinRAR, but it's not going to well, be... Well, assuming, it depends on how long the password is. Yeah. Um, if the password's only like five characters, then yeah, it's possible to brute force it. But if it's something like, I don't know... 12 characters or more. You can bet that they used like an auto-generated password for just like 20 characters long, so it's probably not going to happen. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But the downside of this is I think that you can't track individual victims this way. Yeah, no, it's... So it's, how do you know who it, paid? <laughs> yeah, that's They that's probably one don't way. care, right? <laughs> Yeah, that's probably don't actually. Because like a I, lot of ransomware that's really professional, they have these... I mean, what, what is professional ransomware? Huh. But um, a lot of the more financially <laughs> sophisticated their, ransomware. Their uh, yeah. actual support is better <laughs> than like... some, of, uh, some company support. You mean like Microsoft? That's professional ransomware. I'm not gonna name any companies, but there's, there's, a, there's a few. Oh, you still want to get hired by Microsoft, don't you? you got to keep your options open, you know? <laughs> Do you really think that they're going to restore your files if you pay them with this kind of ransomware where it doesn't even give you a personal identifier or an ID? Or... I mean, it's pretty... I would say it's pretty unlikely 
somehow they they know what passwords have been used like or can figure out what passwords have been used like they have some kind of generation algorithm they can uh the chances are you're probably not going to get your files back even if you did pay this yeah i just i find the most interesting part of this is that they um apparently actually sent out like 30k emails so they pretend to yeah. be adobe or flash or microsoft i always find the microsoft password reset emails most problematic because you could just say well why would i download an update for an email there are just so many other ways to do it but with yes. some of the password reset links and things like that people are much more likely to open them oh yeah 100 percent. it's like i think the it's most your old account and so like um, if you're expecting a parcel and then you get an email about a parcel like tracking, then ones are quite effective. Um, also, like like you mentioned, email resets, the ones where the something about a banking site, um, the bank has sent you an email saying that something's up, you need to click on this link. Those emails are probably the ones that have the highest rate of people falling for them. And it's also interesting that they ask you to pay within 24 hours. That's a pretty harsh timeline. Yeah, a lot of those timelines are just relying on the fact that people are panicking. And if you put quite a timeline, It isn't like an line, actual timeline, won't. right? I don't even it, think no. this thing has a counter. It doesn't even show it. It doesn't. Um, no. I th a lot of it is just psychological, trying to get victims to panic and not really look into it. It wouldn't matter if it was 24 hours, like over 24 hours, and you emailed them uh, in this case. because Yeah, they probably again, wouldn't know. I mean, how would they know? Also, They're not even tracking you. So they have no way of knowing when yeah. your computer was infected. Oh, and also in, in most cases, even, even when they have like a, a countdown, it's usually just, it doesn't mean anything. Now, I'm pretty sure we're going to get corrected in the comments by ransomware developers who are going to be like, oh no, this is how we track the time and this is how we know whether it's 24 hours or not. Speaking of which, the funny thing is, a lot of people do this. They create ransomware and they send it as a message to me. They even put their Discord on their ransomware. In the cases of some people, it's that these people are... Young adults, teenagers, they have friends on Come on, Discord just say script kiddies. I mean, well, yeah, they are script kiddies, but, but like, just again, like that, I'm talking about the average age because it's important. Um, when you have, like, other teenagers and young adults together, um, it, it, like, can turn into an environment where, um, like, what you've made and what you can show off, your malware, um, your skills, in quotation mark, um, become quite important and people will just want to show off to their friends um, be like, oh, look at me. I managed to create this ransomware and it got shown on a video. I mean, isn't that a huge risk though? Because it is illegal. And if you do get caught, I'm sure like you're yes, going to get into a bunch of trouble. Not necessarily friends that they know in person, but like online friends. Ah, so, so they, they, they would just contact the them under another alias and... Yeah, an alias. It's 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 not under their actual name. But seriously, if any of you are actually listening, there are a lot of better ways to use your skills and do something rather than creating ransomware in the security industry. If you have any history of creating any kind of malware, they will just not hire you. Oh yeah. If there's any like criminal pasts that they can look up and find out about, they will usually not like hire people with like especially if it's linked to like computer crime just because it's really bad publicity if someone comes out and says, oh, look, that guy previously wrote malware, and now he's working for an antivirus company. Antivirus companies write malware. Yeah, exactly. And it's funny, a lot of people actually talk to me and they seem to have this mindset where they want to be a malware analyst or a security researcher, but they start by creating ransomware. That's totally the wrong thing to do in, in that position. Yeah, I mean, there's lots of other ways you can get into it if you're interested in it. Um, Watch the PC Security Channel for crying out loud. <laughs> <laughs> so I just grabbed the documents thing. Let's see. So it is an actual RAR file. Yeah. And if I try to extract something... It doesn't seem mm, to be wait. an actual archive. Or maybe it's because these are just empty folders. Let me try the text file. Oh, yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah. I was going to say, I'm yeah, pretty sure... Yeah, those are just yeah. empty, yeah, because I didn't have any files there. Well, I mean, I had something in pictures, but yeah, I don't know why I created it in this format, especially for the documents.rar yeah, file. Yeah, it seems... Wait, does it have the same files in everyone? Let's see. Let's go to pictures. Let's just drop that. Okay. Oh no. That's... Huh, interesting. Bug bounty. I need my bug bounty. But it also seems to create an... Oh no, this is from an older video, I think. Yeah. 
So it only infects the yeah. system that it, you run it on and leave, leaves it at that. Or it's really simplistic. Yeah, let's just restart the system well. and uh, see how the persistence works. Well, it has the wallpaper. Oh, it, yeah, it does load up. I guess it adds itself to start up. Yeah. Let me check. Yep, just puts it in startup. Publisher Microsoft, name Blinker Object. So anyway, I think we'll close with that. Thank you, Sarah, for assisting me in this video. Sarah is one of my friends from MCSoft. There you go. Walking ransomware identification engine, according to F. Wozar. Who is this mysterious person? <laughs> I don't know. Looks shady to me. Thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. Don't forget to like and subscribe and share the video if you enjoyed it. Thank you again for watching, and as always, stay informed, stay secure.